I don't like it when characters are in constant struggle with their facial expressions. Uh, he couldn't help but smile. She fought to control the frown that was creasing her face. It's nonsense. Oh. I, I don't like inappropriate intensifiers and hyperbolic abstract nouns. Uh, things like... Her perfume was ridiculously strong. <laughs> the train was unbelievably crowded. Now, maybe, right, suppose you get on a train in London and it's like, you know, those photographs you see of, of, of trains in India in the 1960s and there's, like, guys on the roof and they're hanging out the doors and there's people riding, riding the blinds. Then you might be incredulous, right? You might be like, wow, I actually do not believe how crowded this train is. Oh, was. Winking. I love you, she said. You're not so bad yourself. He winked. Does anyone under 65 still really wink? I, I don't think so. I think unless your protagonist is a 70-year-old former sailor with an outstanding sexual harassment charge, try not to have him wink. Oh. <sighs> sighing. It's too much sighing in prose fiction. Everyone's always... <gasps> Huffing and blowing and enough air is produced to shift the Gulf Stream. Oh. Sentences in which the author tells us that a thing didn't exert an influence when there's no reason for us to expect that it would. So, for instance, um, after the funeral, she was left alone with her grief. The sheepskin rug underfoot did nothing to improve her mood. Oh. Inverted commas used to indicate anything other than dialogue, a title, or a quote. Her singing, her so-called singing, actually sounded like a dog having its testicles crushed in a car door. Oh. Smiling. Uh, there's too much smiling in prose fiction. <laughs> we should know uh, whether your character is smiling from what they're saying and doing. Oh. I don't like weird or cliched descriptions of people crying. He felt tears gathering behind his eyelids and crawling over his cheeks. Um, thing is, people have been crying the same way as long as language has existed. So the chances that you're going to find an interesting new way to describe that experience are pretty slim. Uh, so somebody absolutely has to cry. Just... Tell us that as simply as possible. Oh. The word whilst, uh, it's, a, it's a pompous word that's preserved in British English for no good reason. There's, there's not very much I agree with Martin Amos about, but I think he was spot on when he said that anyone who writes whilst is subliterate. Oh. Any first person narrator who sounds like a grumpy blogger who has been through a divorce and watched too much Jeremy Clarkson. It, People who are relentlessly negative uh, about trivial things are, are kind of boring. You know, like, oh, isn't this awful? And, oh, I went to the pub the day and it was crap. And, oh, the place was shady and the beer tastes like piss. And, oh, the music, modern music is awful, isn't it? And the barmaid was ugly. And, oh, dear, isn't everything so crap? And you know what? That's insincere. It's... It's superficial, it's drivel, because we all find beauty. We all must worship something. It's like Michel Welbeck wrote at the end of Atomized. He said, Tortured, contradictory, individualistic, quarrelsome, the human race was capable of extraordinary violence, but nonetheless never quite abandoned a belief in love. Thanks for watching and good luck with your writing.